All right, guys, we got the regionals finals from Knoxville, Tennessee. The tournament just happened on the 3rd of February. We're going to watch the full match between Ryan and Aiden. And we're going to see the highest level of gameplay. Gardevoir versus Last Zone Dragonite Toolbox uh, with a bunch of stuff. So this is going to be very impressive. We're going to learn the highest of level of game plans. As you can see, Ryan starts the game figuring out what Pokemon he has. He doesn't really even count the energies. Not yet. He's just counting Pokemon. And then after that, I think he'll start looking for the items. It's a tough start there, starting the Zacian. I know they don't like playing Zacian early, and they only want to play Zacian out as Gardevoir when you really need him and when you can really power him up. It's kind of a tough start here. Level Balls is getting that Rolls, looks like. I think the goal is going to be to set up two to three Rolls, potentially, and maybe move one of the Rolls forward so you can go into Kerala Mirage Step. We shall see right now. Zacian immediate activates his energy, gives himself one, and ends turn. That's so. That's the only play. <coughs> I thought he was going to go ahead and fill up his board, but he didn't. Just plays one Ralts and actually tries to attack with the Zacian next turn. Potentially he could hit with Zacian V next turn. Aiden now. Let's see how Aiden's going to start. He can at any point here, once he retrieves this PGI, I can send it back to the deck to never ever deck out, basically. Okay, we see he has a Sableye. He's going to play the game a little bit different. Aiden does not put his Pokemon at the beginning or at the front. He just goes ahead and looks throughout his deck and figures out exactly what he's missing. I think that's what he's going to pick. He's going to pick two Comphase with the Battle VIP. I don't, yeah, you don't want to play the Sableye that early, of course. But I saw him eyeing, and out, eyeing it out. What else does he have in there? I don't see a Cram. Maybe we're missing a Cram. As you can see, he's actually figuring out what cards is he missing. This is his first search. It's a very valuable search, guys. A lot of times you cannot search, especially as a Lost Zone deck. You're really not searching your deck a lot unless you have an S Ball or a Battle VIP. Uh, besides that, you're, or a Super Rod, when you put your cards back, you're really not looking at your deck. So if uh, Iono activates, you basically all those cards stay at the bottom. And Aiden is taking as much value as he can from that first early search. Looks like he only has one battle VIP. Maybe we're going to start doing flower selecting to try to search for a Colrus. Does he have a Colrus? No, I don't see a Colrus. Oh, no, there, is, there it is. You always activate Colrus first. I figured it out. What you do is you're trying to gain as much knowledge as you can. So you try, you want to know, it's better to look at five cards from the top of your deck so you know what to put in the lost zone over looking at two cards so first you look at the top five, figure out what you don't need, toss out into the lost zone. Now flower selecting is going to be a little bit better because you know what you really could be using. Wow, this is an amazing escape rule, putting out that Ralts. I don't think Ryan wants to lose this Ralts and right now it's susceptible to be hit with a cram if we have one energy. Oh no, we have another switch card. So if we can pull out that ram, uh, cram right now, we get one KO. Oh, I see the cram. Pokestop activates. Palpad switch. Oh my god, this is actually coming off really well. We're going to hit that Ralts here, guys. There. Oh no! We don't pull the... Wow. He had... I think he had Cram. He has Cram in hand, just didn't play it. He didn't want to get that KO, which is crazy in my opinion. So now Kirillak in Mirage Step. He had Cram, right? No, he didn't have Cram. No, that's not Cram. I think that was a blue energy and I thought it was a Cram. <coughs> <laughs> That's not cram guys. I think if he had cram he would have attacked There's no way you leave that Ralts on board. No way Can anybody tell me the value of this energy? I just gave it to somebody for free. Is that a really expensive card? <laughs> I hope not anyways um, Let's see here Okay, this Ralts. what's what's happening? I don't know where that energy is sitting right now Where's the energy sitting? Man, Ryan's a little bit, uh, un I don't know what's happening. He's moving the energy a little bit too much. There it is. Ralts is getting the Mirage step out. I'm Honestly, if we killed that Ralts, I think we would have been insanely ahead, Aiden. Yeah, as you can see, there's no crams. There's no crams in the deck. Which is why I'm always w weirded out by it. Why do people 
like to play cram or sorry wh why do people only play one cram instead of two i feel like you need it and it's so easy to lose it okay he puts on the chorus and the boss back with the pal pad doesn't like losing them he's looking for a chorus guys so hopefully this flower selecting can help him i think he regrets not flower selecting because he needed that chorus and it was right in the top of the deck so I bet you he's regretting not flower selecting first. But as I told you guys, you want to know all, as much information. So you always try to use uh, abilities that do look at more cards before abilities that see less cards. That's basically what you're doing. There's the flower selecting. Uh, blue energy versus switch card puts that blue energy in his hand. Yeah, if, he, if we pull out a Radiant Greninja here... Okay, we can find a Force Seal Stone, uh, Colorus here. But we still need a Radiant Greninja. But yeah, if we get that Radiant Greninja out, that's pretty much a uh, guaranteed KO on two. Kirillas. I think Aiden is playing, needs to focus on that Radiant Greninja here. If he slows down those two Kerala's, you cannot play. It's going to take Aiden, Ryan all, like two more turns to set up two Kerala's. There's the Colorus. What are we going to get in here? Man, I want to see what we're getting, man. I have no idea what he got. A super run and cram. There's the cram. Finally, he has cram in hand. It's a little bit late. I guess we could get one KO. Oh yeah, he did retreat already. Oh my god, Aiden made a mess up. No, Aiden actually messed up here, guys. He attached energy thinking he can retreat, but he can't retreat. He already retreated once. <coughs> so the attachment of the energy still counts, but he cannot retreat. So if he didn't have that switch card, he would have lost. And uh, I think now he's asking, he's like, can I pick up the energy again? But I don't, I don't think you can. I think the energy attachment happens, but you don't retreat. Aiden seems to have uh, missed it. Uh, I think he, he doesn't. He, he. I think he's thinking he didn't retreat, but he did. As you can see, retreating is blacked out on the top right. I don't know what that was. Uh, maybe the judges. Maybe it was Aiden's question. Maybe the judges were questioning. I'm not sure. But Cram gets that KO. The Kirill is not huge value. Uh, we were missing too many parts. So this is what's happening with Lost Zone. Lost Zone could do much more work. But it needs so many different pieces. And you need to go find all these pieces together. And put them together. It takes a long time. And so when you don't have a piece of the equation. You just have to rely on another attack. One thing I'm actually really impressed about, we usually only see Lost Zone decks run uh, Path. This one's actually running the Pokestops. Really impressed by that. A lot of decks don't want to run Pokestop, so using it is kind of useless to them. Roaring Moon is the only deck that can benefit from that, I guess. But then you just not run the Pokestop. Gardevoir here, went for the Gardevoir, now we're attaching, there to his first attachment with the Zacian, Zacian can now attack. Question is, is he going to pull that bird in to attack with it, or is he going to just kill that Cram? That Cram is huge value if you kill it. Okay, there's the boss. KO the Comfey. Interesting. Interesting, Ryan K. was the comfy with the energy on it that he realized Aiden messed up in. Maybe to kind of add to Aiden's uh, psychological break here. I'm not sure, but Aiden's already at 10 lost zones. So now he needs to get some Pokemon out. Like a Dragonite can kill the Zacian V... 
The Sable Eye can do a lot of damage to the back end. A lot of damage. Basically forcing that Gardevoir out of the game. Okay, we find another Comfey with the Colrus. Are you gonna play that Comfey? Bro, <laughs> this, this last zone's too big. Alright, um. So now what are we gonna do, baby? What are you gonna do, Aiden? Aiden, are you gonna pull out a Pokemon? Are you gonna pull out a Dragonite here? Is he gonna play the Heavy Ball? Bro, he's got no, no cards left. What is that? A, is that a Lost Vacuum? Interesting. He's running Lost Vacuum. There's the Sableye. We could jump this Pidgeot into the deck anytime we want. So it's safe. It's safe. We're not losing here. All right, baby. Come on. A Sableye can actually attack. That makes that puts, puts that Gardevoir out of the game. And you could uh, leave two uh, on Ralts, just so he, the second guard war doesn't do insane amounts of damage, yeah. So he removes Ralts, 50 damage on Ralts, and I guess the rest on the guard war. That Sable Eye is really strong, guys. Oh, he puts all of it on the Zacian, and only leaves two? Wait, what? He only leaves one damage on the guard war? That, that just makes no sense. Why didn't he at least leave two? I think he wanted to leave two damage on the Gardevoir. Collapse doesn't lose anything. Only like four or five cards left in Aiden's deck. What is Ryan gonna do here? How is he gonna come back? I don't think Zacian V can attack. Oh no, he can, he can, he can. I guess I guess the attack is done. Uh, I guess uh, Ryan really cannot do anything. Just add attach one energy and attack again. There is the Pidgeot. Pidgeot can jump any moment he wants, so that's basically a free retreat. There is the Super Rod. He can put Sableye back. I don't know why we're pulling Radiant Greninja now. Uh, I don't think... I, I think Sableye was more value than Radiant Greninja. Maybe I'm wrong. Oh my god, I think he's gonna pull a Dragonite. Uh, what, what is that card that pulls a drag? Well, the Dragonite is in his deck. It's in his hand, Dragonite. So how does he switch it out? How is he gonna switch it out for the Dragonite? It's got the exact amount of attachments. Damn, it can just KO things? For 80, if you have a stadium place attack, does 80 more. That's pretty impressive. So, 160 damage. And he can jump it out anytime he wants. And then he can Mirage Gate again. Interesting Pidgeot. V, interesting tech card. Not sure where is it best used against. Because you are losing two prizes for 160 attack. It's really not the, the best. Wow, wow, these Lost Zone decks, they're, they're so big brain, man. I haven't even gotten to that level yet. Let's see what Gardevoir wants to do here. Ryan is going to try to set up another Kerala, I guess. Like, Oh, no, Aiden just got... Oh, no. Aiden just got uh, penalized, I think. What just happened? I think Aiden just got penalized for something. Uh oh Oh no. Oh no, they're gonna penalize Aiden. I think I remember this. That's where he he loses two prizes. This is so bad. Why are they doing that to him? I want to hear what's happening. 
again, we're discussing the judges are discussing it here. Um, either way, I think Aiden was just such in a powerful position there, even with without that knockout, wouldn't you say? Yeah, uh, it was just kind of semantics here, but uh, I think they're maybe asking if Aiden had like the stadium in hand, could have bumped it, but I don't think I saw a stadium in hand, unfortunately. Yeah, so now they're getting the two cards that were drawn from the prize cards, and this could be interesting because Aiden technically solved cards that he shouldn't have. Most of the time when that happens, it's a double prize loss. Wait a minute, are you saying, telling me it wasn't enough damage? That would mean that Ryan would just need one. Damn, so the Pidgeot only activates if you have a stadium in play? Not if the opponent has a stadium in play? Knockout on a two prizer like this Pidgeot V to be able to win this game one. That's true. And right now, no. he's active. Yeah. And uh, there was a Zacian in the active as well. It's going to need a couple of energies to knock out that Pidgeot V, but it is damaged. Should have around 80 damage plus the 20, I believe, from the Guard War EX. So is it possible to get this knockout? Yeah, so there was 60 damage on that Zacian V plus the 80, so 140. That means you can attach up to three more energies. And so that's, that's six energies. That's just enough. Yeah, that is. Um, but I don't think there was a way to get the energies in the discard. That's the big thing. Yes, definitely without the refinement curlias, it is very tough to get. Yeah, refined curlias really slowed down the Ryan deck. Oh my god, Aiden's gonna get penalized here. I don't think. I think I remember this. They're gonna give uh, Ryan two free prize cards. No. No, these judges, they, they should have shut down the game immediately, like right when the Pidgeot attacked, but they waited a little bit longer. I think they were checking on the actual uh, ruling, and because the game continued... Uh, we are in a state. We are in a. We're stuck basically because people did things they were not supposed to do. They would, Aiden looked at cards he wasn't supposed to look at, and Ryan actually continued playing the game he wasn't <laughs> supposed to play. <laughs> so, so that's impressive. If the judges weren't there, the Pidgeot would have ruled as a, as a full attack. Yeah, let's re let's listen if they're talking about it here. Both players thought it was a knockout because you see Ryan there just. Scoop up the Zacian, put it in the discard. Yeah, and again, it was, it would have been... A and immediately he uses Worker. Cool play indeed, like, why attack with something like a Dragonite that even damages your board, but you can attack with this free Pidgeot V could even, once it's damaged, hide back into the deck. It does feel like the most optimal play. Uh, just lacking one more card, unfortunately. And uh, again, so only very, very few, if not only Aiden can say he's attacked with Flight Surf at the finals of a <laughs> regional championship. Um, it's still true, just not, didn't take a knockout. <laughs> yeah, that is true. Uh, it'll be interesting to see if there is a DPL uh, awarded for these players. But honestly, I would like to see a warning. Like, mm -hmm. it seems like both players are kind of at fault here. But it really just depends on what they were saying and everything like that. No, no, I don't think there should be a warning. No. No, this is tough. DPL here. That's rough. So Ryan is only going to need one more knockout to take this game. Yeah, and with no, that's that's the warning they gave Aiden. They screwed Aiden up. They gave Ryan two free prize cards. That's crazy. More knockout to take this game. Yeah, and and on if anything has happened, but uh, looks like it is going to be a Ooh. DPL here. That's rough. So Ryan is only going to need one more knockout to take this game. Yeah, and with 140 damage on that Zacian, if there's so not only does he. Not only does he put the cards back, the two two prize cards, he actually gives Ryan two extra prize cards. Holy moly. That's game over. I mean, that's crazy. Aiden went from literally a winning position, an undefeated position, to just lost the game, lost like that. Just like that, within a split second. Just because he didn't have a stadium and Ryan bumped it out. He played the stadiums a little bit too early, and it's... Uh, so now he's struggling. Wow. I think here Ryan can get the KO. And if he gets this KO, that's game. Oh my god. We're going to go Scream Tail? He's going to retreat into Scream Tail. And then Scream Tail attaches two, take four. And then he can hit for 80. No, he can hit for... 
Wow, one more price card, one more screen tail. What did, what was that for? A hundred? Uh, four times two is eighty, right? Yeah, eighty. All right, Aiden has one more prize. He has to get this prize, or he loses game. That basically. It's impossible because he needs to kill that Gardevoir. And even if he kills that Gardevoir, the Screamtail is going to come back. Here, honestly, I just scoop. Okay, well, Radiant Greninja could save us. Let's see here. The problem is when you put Radiant Greninja and you get the double KO, he comes out with the Gardevoir and he can just KO you. It's almost... You're in a losing position here. It could be that Ryan needs a boss to win still. Let's see if the Radiant Greninja can do this attack. There's a Dragonite. This Pidgeot can get a KO on the Screamtail, but Zacian V KOs it. We retreat. Do we just jump into the deck? Okay, Jirachi's gonna save us. I think we just jump in. And then he uses uh, the Mirage Gate to get some energy out. And now we just need to attach one energy. That's it. One blue energy. And we're amazing. We need a super rod in an energy and pull it out somehow. Oh, no, no. We just used the 50 attack. The 50 attack. The first attack. The shred. Damn it, guys. I don't know. We'll see. I think Zacian V here gets the KO. If we have a boss here, we win game. We don't have a boss. I think you just move up the Zacian V and uh, hope to God you can draw into a boss or something. His only problem is he has a Gardevoir EX on board and that's not a uh, Gardevoir. I don't know what's happening here. He just attached from discard and attached from hand. So two attachments. Only one attachment hurt. Man, I think that's game over here. I think if we get one more. Oh, no. He just put some damage on it. Wow. Ryan is actually playing very, like so unoptimal. He's playing so unoptimal. But because Aiden is so far behind, we still lose as Aiden. Because even if we get the KO, which is free right now, Ryan just comes back with a guard of war and KOs us. Oh man, this is tough. This is so tough. Can we get rid of this Dragonite somehow? We need to get rid of this Dragonite. Can you do it? Yeah, he has Super Rod. He can put back some energies. Mirage Gate. Damn it, guys. We need that Dragonite away from active because we're, we're hurt right now. Honestly, if Radiant Greninja can get an attack in or Sableye, we win game. He needs to shuffle his deck. No stadium, but gets the KO. Oh my god, one last attack. Can we pull out that guard? Uh, oh, there it is. Contra Catcher and KO. Yep. Damn it, Aiden. I'm so sorry, bro. You literally were winning this game. Ryan played it so tough. He played such a bad game for him. Like For him, it was a very tough game. And he still gets the, K the win. This is actually unfair for Aiden, in my opinion. Uh, I know Aiden made a mistake uh, by counting that, basically misreading Pidgeot, thinking just a stadium in place it doesn't have to be his stadium, but Pidgeot is actually, it has to be your stadium. But I don't understand why they co it cost him two prize cards. That makes no sense to me. And it's costing him the whole championship, this one mistake. Uh, this is crazy. We could also say that Aiden knows the deck inside and out so it's very hard for him to make a mistake like that uh let's go ahead to turn to hopefully aiden is not completely uh in a position where he's like 100 percent tilted <laughs> hopefully he can actually still come back 
let's see how this goes. As you can see, he's going to be the one to start. So maybe he likes to go first against Gardevoir. Actually, I think you do. So you get a nice setup and then you can get a KO early. Also going second against them doesn't hurt. Cram to start is not ideal, but he's been starting Battle VIP every single game, which is really good. Goes for the Pidgeot immediately. Touch her Y. We use Comfy. Oh my god, we're so far behind. We're so behind. We don't have even another Comfy. We don't have a switch. There's the Super Rod gone. There's a Force Seal Stone and we pass. Oh my god, this is kind of risky because uh, Ryan has Lost Vacuum. He plays Lost Vacuums. Alright, Ryan's going to go through his deck, see exactly what cards he has. Then he's going to figure out... What the hell does he want to do? Let's speed up a little bit. Okay, he just picks up two Ralts. Fair. Man, what is that? An energy switch? What the hell is that? There's a boss? Oh my god, we're bossing in the cram, but we cannot do much. Oh, we just attach one energy into the Zation V. We started both games Zation V. Ryan, this is not ideal. For some reason, Aiden's like playing on the highest speed mode ever existing. Which makes no sense to me. Just relax a little bit, man. Oh, oof, putting away the Pocky Stop. Damn it, we actually need that Pocky Stop. That's huge. That's showing you how much it doesn't have cards. Oh my god, no more comp phase? No way. No, there's, there's comp phase in there. I need to learn how to shuffle like that. So the comp phase can get one more flower selecting, but we are not getting any colors in hand. This is really, really, really bad, guys. This is really bad. When you just rely on flower selecting over Colorus, it's crazy bad. I mean, we can't even use that. He has to find a Colorus. Wow. He has to find a Colorus because then he would have just been screwed. Hopefully, this Colorus finds him a switch so he can get that cram attack in. And then once he switches into the cram, gets that Ralt out, immediately makes that decision. I don't see a switch. Oh, there it is. Switch card. We do get the KO in here. We have a sp super rod. Do we do we use it now or we wait? Okay, picks up a lightning energy. Aiden did really good this turn. He didn't have a uh, Colorus. He had to force Seal Stone for it. So we're not going to see another Colorus unless we pick it up, unfortunately. I'm not seeing any Poke Gears or anything interesting that can help him. Ralts already became Gardevoir. This is the Shining Arcana Guard of War. So Iono is being used here. This doesn't hurt Aiden in any way. Aiden really did not like his hand. He wanted more Chloris anyway. Ryan also could get benefit from this hand. He really didn't have a lot of pieces. He only had a couple of counter catchers and some rare candy. He really didn't have a lot of things. Now he has much more Pokemon. He's going to Artisan here, maybe. Artisan can allow him to find another Ralts. And then he needs to figure out... I guess we're not going to Mirage Step here. So we're just going to have to pump, play a bunch of Ralts down. He does have the Ultra Ball in hand. It's just a little bit expensive. But he could toss out that uh, Psychic Energy. It's, it's worth it. Now Zation V is also going to activate. Don't forget. So we're going to go through the deck again. Really impressed by this, guys. Uh, Aiden's playing really, really good. Uh, playing at the highest level. Like, making insane decisions. Uh, Force Seal Stones is coming up handy. And Ryan, I'm not going to lie. Ryan seems like he's missing a lot of pieces. Okay, he, we have a chorus here. Start to uh, throw out the battle VIP. Keep everything else in hand. 
Okay, Hisuian V ball. What is good? Where's that gonna ball against you? Iridian Greninja. Not bad. Not bad at all. All right. So, do we get the KO on the Zacian? Is this possible? Can we Zacian KO? No. Unless we play a Dragonite. Down. I mean, we do have the Mirage Gates, but we don't have. Uh, we have access to them now. And we can use them, but we don't have the pieces. We don't have the Mirage Gates, and we don't have the Dragonite. So I don't think the Zacian V dies here. Oh, I see a Mirage Gate. He's gonna go for the Pidgeot. This makes sense. You attack first with the Pidgeot, jump him in. Oh, never mind. <coughs> in my opinion, this is even better. Oh my god. Come on, man. Man, they're gonna force him to put that uh, energy. It doesn't matter, man. It doesn't really matter. Bro, he still didn't put the he still put didn't put the deck down. He didn't shuffle the deck, so he could pick whatever energy he wants. He doesn't have to be sh just because the energy touched in doesn't mean that that's it. He it's I think that the decision is done when the sh deck is put down, shuffled into the bottom, like when it's put down and you ask the opponent to to shuffle your deck. But if he's figuring out, he's like maybe mapping out what color energy he wants to put in. That that's not a full uh, attachment. Like the deck's still in his hand. He didn't put it down. Maybe he didn't see the lightning until the end. Anyways, I don't know, man. These guys are way too anal about this stuff. I get it. It's tournaments. A huge guy. Huge deal. But that was not a problem right there. To force him to go into the psychic energy. Even Ryan didn't care about it. Uh, the, the, it's a lot of arbitrary stuff. Because there has to be a code. Like there has to be... Okay, if this deck... If you put the deck down, you cannot make any decisions. Or if the energy touches the uh, Pokemon, that means you have to attach the energy to it. That, that's how the rules should be. If the rules are like that, it makes sense why they are very anal about it. But uh, they're just shark ruling him for nothing. Aiden needs to slow down too. I don't know why Aiden's like pumped up to the highest extreme. Relax a little bit, Aiden. I get it. This is championship regionals. $10,000 on the line. But you're making... Uh, like silly mistakes that are really costing you the game and slowing you down. Like that game, that game one, we lost literally because of one Aiden mistake. Because Aiden made one mistake, they gave him, they gave Ryan two free prizes, and he Ryan won from a losing position. It's like almost impossible position to win because he didn't have to go through six prizes. He only needed four, and he made the, <laughs> made it up <laughs> with the scream tail. All right, so. He was able to bring back the rolls in, and then with the bringing back, he was able to Ultra Ball a Rolls to his board. Dude, if we Radiant Greninja one more time, uh, well, this Greninja dies. But if we can get rid of these two Rolls, I mean, that's pretty much it. Ryan is stuck. That Gardevoir can never attack ever again. Well, I guess it could. I guess it could. Because there's a reversal energy on it. Zation Fee gets the KO. Aiden now has uh, the pieces he needs, really. There's a Kyogre right there. And an energy recycler, I saw. He has some pieces here. Oh my god, he puts away the Kyogre. Never mind, never mind. Even though Kyogre would have been insane here, I think. Pokestop. <laughs> I don't even know if Pokestop is a... <laughs> is freaking... A map or a lost zone card. <laughs> I have no idea. Is it a... Stadium or a lost zone card? I have no idea. But anyways, Dragonite's down finally. We attach an energy to it. A Mirage Step can get us two energies, but I think we need Super Rod first. We, ha we have an Energy Recycler, so we'll be fine here. We just need a Mirage Gate. Those Energy Recyclers into a Kyogre would have been insane. There's the Mirage Gate. 
Oh my god, Dragonite can attack. Dragonite gets the Zacian V. Aiden is doing amazing work, guys. Aiden's uh, pushed himself forward so far from a very from a really losing position. I'm not gonna lie, that force seal stone really needed the chorus, or he would have been losing the game. But now, after you play a couple of turns, when you get to lost zone ten, you really don't care anymore. There's a mobile, and he passes. There's no switch. Oh my god, there was no switch to switch into the Dragonite! There was no switch to switch into the Dragonite, no... No, we're always making these like one-off, one-card mistakes. We're like always needing one more card. This is one thing about Lost Zone that I realized. You're always needing one more card. That's why you're always flower selecting, always coercing. You're always missing one piece. No, that Dragonite needed to be pushed forward so you can get that f two, two prizers. No, 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 this sucks. Uh, I think one thing Zacian V could do is push in the Pidgeot, KO it. That gets him ahead. And he just needs one more attachment. Damn, Dragonite could have caught that Zacian V out of the game. And honestly... Ryan had nothing else. He's not gonna attack with the guard for. And if he does, it's a twenty. Is only twenty damage is gonna be on it. Sable, I could really win game next turn. But we don't. That which makes sense why Aiden pushed in all the psychic energy because he wants to. Uh, Sable, I Sable, I can really win you game. Yeah, we need one more attachment to get the KO on a on a Pidgeot. Man, Ryan, Ryan, I'm not going to lie, guys. Ryan is not playing optimally. He's trying to figure out something to do, but he's really... He, he seems like he's always trying to set up, and Aiden's always uh, breaking his setup. Finally, Ryan has the Ralts and the Kerala's he needs. But uh, honestly, if that Dragonite attacked, it would have been a little bit too late. Because even if you have these Kerala's, it doesn't make sense to do anything with them. There it is, Zacian V doesn't even bring in the Pidgeot. He just attacks, KOs uh, the Comfey. Oh my god, I don't think we're going to have a switch. But we do have the energy, so we don't care. We have an energy in our de in our hand, so we don't care. There's the Chorus. Oh my god, we pick up a lot of energies. No, this is really bad. I mean, I guess we could just we just need a sable eye, four four or five cards in the hand in the deck. We find a sable eye that we, we we get really far ahead. Oh, flower selecting the mirage gate. Three cards in the deck left for Aiden. I mean, Aiden went through the whole deck. He's got the energy he needs to get the attack, and now is it too far? Okay, there's the sable eye. I think we save a lie here. I actually think we Sableye. I think we Sableye and keep Dragonite till the end. But it doesn't really matter. I'm just saying Sableye right now, just in case uh, Ryan plays a Jirachi down, that really shuts down the Sableye. But if he doesn't, then and you know he doesn't run Jirachi, then you can just keep the Sableye for later. Once that Dragonite is out, you can get those KOs. Uh, damn it. I'm not sure about this, guys. I think what we should have done, we should have sable eyed, KO those Gardevoirs and one Kerala. No, or KO the Gardevoir and the Ralts. And then next turn with the Dragonite attack and kill the Zacian V. Let's see, maybe I'm wrong. Maybe you do go for the Zacian V first. And then they get rid of your Dragonite. Then you can get rid of the Kerala and the Gardevoir. Yeah, that makes sense as well. So sable eye, if, if, if Ryan has Jirachi... Then Sableye should have been used this turn. What's up, you boy? You're finally being consistent. Keep it up, man, my brother. Thank you, Vec. Yeah, man, I'm just going to do daily. Man, there's just so much Pokemon content that you can actually stay consistent on this. Like, you can do so much. Like, they do, like, three or four regionals in one <laughs> in one day. It's, it's crazy stuff. So much content, so much top 16, uh, finals, uh, deck profile. It's insane. So much content for Pokemon. 
they actually have a like a live streaming scene like i think there's a company that streams all their events and so they take it really seriously it's not like a uh, eggman <laughs> eggman streams <laughs> i'm not talking shit but i'm just saying like they're really set up here it's an amazing setup they have a lot of stuff here for pokemon all right aiden what are you gonna do here brother uh i think Gardevoir can get the ko here on that dragonite what is that rocks iono that's an iono not bad good timing actually that's probably gonna hurt that sable eye <gasps> iono we put all the psychic energy down at the bottom of the deck uh oh uh oh we can't even get any more ko's a uh, rot is too 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 big and oh my god, we could just return this Gardevoir, uh, retreat, sorry, this Gardevoir and get uh, the second Gardevoir to attack. We do have Gardevoir and Gardevoir EX on board. So we're going to do some damage. If you ever want to look at a good Pokemon YouTuber, Zapdos. Yeah, yeah. I actually am getting, uh, it's interesting what he does. What he does is he looks at the top 16 decks, figures out a deck he likes and plays it out and does a, like a kind of what I did with the deck profiles. So we can definitely do something like that. Because I don't want to build bad decks. Instead, we could play the top decks. That's amazing. Because I, I suck at Pokemon still. I need to play the best decks. I can't play my own decks. All right, Ryan gets that KO on the Dragonite. Wow. Okay, Sableye cannot get any KOs anymore. I think we should have Sableye that last turn. I'll tell you why. Because what happens here... With, okay, so Ralts is at 60, right? I think Ralts is at 60. Yeah, he's at 60. So he could have done 60 damage to Ralts. And then this is at 90 and he's at 140. So 60 plus 60, you get two KOs. You get the Gardevoir, EX, the Gardevoir and the Gardevoir uh, and the Ralts out. And then you would have still had the Dragonite. No, he could have KO'd. He would have had to either KO the Sable Eye or boss in the Dragonite to KO it. I think we should have Sable Eye. I'm not going to lie. But at that point, I think we didn't have any more switch cards or any way to move energies or retreat. We didn't even have a retreat left. So maybe, maybe that's what's happened. Like he got stuck. Like he saw the Sable Eye a little bit too late. But man, I think we're losing because of the sequencing. Uh, because now we can't get a KO on the Ralts. And we can get a KO on the Gardevoir, but we cannot get a KO on the Ralts. So literally all we had to do is get a KO on the Ralts a turn before. And then Dragonite could have killed anything on board we would have won. The problem is when you kill the Ralts, you're killing a Gardevoir as well. Because that Ralts is 60 and this Gardevoir is at 90. Or at 140, but it's already taken 90 damage. So 50 damage kills it. Okay, we move in. And, oh man, Aiden is just uh, making up things right now. It's uh, Nothing here is going to work. I guess the Radiant Greninja could save the day here, but... There it is. Sable Eye can win in one turn, but it's not enough unless this Gardevoir can shove three energies out on itself, which is almost like 100% possible. <gasps> the Manaphy can actually shut us down. Yeah, we need to see the deck. How many energies he has? Two? Two plus a third one in hand. Damn it, I think he's got exactly enough to KO us. <coughs> Damn it, guys. I think he KOs this uh, Sableye right here. Yeah, one energy from the hand and then attach two from the deck, uh, from the discard pile. Oh, Professor's Research. Wow, he tossed out his whole ener all the energies in his hand. The thing is, he can't really attach a lot of energy. He can only attach one energy from the discard pile or he dies. So he's looking for a reversal, I think, is what he's doing. Wait, what? Oh, because he couldn't... Oh my god, I get it. I get what happened because he couldn't attach from the discard pile. The only way he could attach was the Shining Arcana and he got it.
And because the shiny arcana, he was able to attach, retreat into the guard for and KO. The Sableye winning the game. Honestly, uh, Aiden played insane. Aiden did so well. Performed amazing job. I mean, he did so well. Aiden played so good. I'm not going to lie. There's a couple of mistakes he did. But my God, was a like, high-level gameplay. And I'm not going to lie. Gardevoir tried to set up so hard. And he just got countered every single time. Uh, Aiden... Aiden did amazing. He just uh, he just was one prize away. Ugh, that sucks. That sucks. But good good job, Aiden. Absolutely.